Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much the organizers to giving us the chance to speak about, about our pet microfossils. And those are organically preserved microfossils recorded from the Duchamp to formation. Our work is based on the collections, very new and very extensive and very diverse, which are prepared by my colleague uh, Pengju. And I join him in the effort of doing taxonomy and biostratigraphic interpretation of the microfossils which occur in the Dushantu formation in China. Just to recall you the major uh, features of the Ediacaran successions which are preserved on different paleocontinents. As you see by the thicknesses of the formations and uh, groups, they are very different in the thickness and of course very different in the lithological uh, um, characteristic. However, what is important from the point of view of the preservation of microfossils and their possible use for the biostratigraphy is to recognize their ranges and in some cases, like for example in Dushantu, there is excellent first, the earliest, the lowermost record of organic microfossils, just a few meters above the base of the formation, so we have very elegant age constraint on their appearance. In other regions, we have as well very elegant uh, record of the uppermost appearances, and this is particularly in uh, Australia, where we have time interval, which is allocated to the rocks preserving the microfossils, and we have as well very elegant record from Siberia, and this is a little bit higher, 800 meters above the amyctites, but the assemblage is remarkable and can be correlated very well in some uh, parts with Chinese successions. The record from Baltica is as well very elegant from the White Sea area, and there is 600 meters interval preserving the ornamented microfossils, which are useful for biostratigraphy. We still do not have record of microfossils from Newfoundland or Canada, but anyway, there are other, perhaps even better fossils. So anyway, keeping in mind different thicknesses of different scale, few thousand meters, few hundred meters or 1,000 meters, and we keep this in mind when thinking about the relative ages of appearance of taxa and their ranges. First of all, two representative taxa, and they are preserved by silicification, so they are studied in cherts and thin sections. We have two groups, in fact, of microfossils preserved in China. One group is those, and this is Tian Shushanya, those are the species which are very complex morphologically, very elegant, easy to recognize. However, they are known only in the regional distribution, only in South China, and there is one record from India, but we have no good constraint on the age from India. Anyway, those are, those taxa, Tanshushanya and many other, have this limitation of the distribution. There is another group of taxa which are definitely cosmopolitan because we know they records from three, four, five continents and perhaps new record will come and they are easily recognizable to the level of species and they are known from several uh, paleocontinents. It may be then inferred that, some, uh, that those organisms which are preserved as organic world microfossils were distributed by dispersar, they were planktonic, they were distributed by the ocean currents because we know them all over all the continents in the shallow shelf and a little bit deeper um, successions. So from the point of view of thinking about biostratigraphy, we have a problem. We have some group of taxa which are regionally distributed, but we have number of species which may be very well globally distributed and some of them have very well established ranges. Now, another problem when we deal with the microfossils, we have different modes of preservation and in some occasions this may cause some uncertainty 
uh, with the identification. However, I believe that we are coming to uh, an understanding that we can easily compare those taxa which are, or specimens, which are preserved in siliciclastic rocks and they are extracted from the samples by macerations. So we look at them at biological preparates. Another group is, are those preserved by early diagenetic permineralization. Those are within silici, um, I mean, cherts, and those are phosphide by taxa. And looking at the morphology, we can easily recognize them, and the same like this taxon and this taxon. So we are overcoming the different kind of modes of preservation. To such details that even having beautifully preserved and very specific morphologically element of the entire vesicle, like this anchor-like shape tips of the processes, this is specimen recognized and the taxon recognized from Siberia, and this specimen is um, um, recovered by Kostya Nagovici. And this one is a new record from China, preserved in thin section and chert, and we see perfectly the same morphology. So anyway, we can, with kind of good confidence, say, yes, we have the same species. So to come to biostratigraphic interpretation, we, compare dif we use different methods of studies, we compare the taxonomy, we look carefully at the taphonomic alteration or changes affecting the identification, and of course we look at the successions, which are the most continuous, to try to recognize the ranges of strata, and in some cases where we have isotopic datings of the portions of the successions containing those, those microfossils, we can easily and nicely recognize first appearance datum, perhaps last appearance datum. So we are coming as well to some kind of biochronology, using the isotopic datings for the age of the fossils and their taxa. But having a look at the real successions. This I didn't mention, but the collection and work of uh, Peng Ju within the Yangtze Gorges area, this is northern part of the China uh, platform, there are very many successions. And for this work, which we are presenting now, we used 11 successions, restudied. Some of them are totally new and for the first time recording microfossils. And of course, this is a very complex work. So looking at one of the most classical successions, please keep in mind that we are looking at the period of time around 84 million years, and we have the base of the Dushantu formation and the top. We have succession of around 180 meters. So remember, this is very uh, thin succession, very long period of time during which it was accumulated. So naturally, there are many unconformities, paraconformities, and hayati, and not always it is easy to recognize them because I believe there are more paraconformities which still are not recognized. However, in this particular section, Change Yuan C section, we have a, a new unconformity or paraconformity. Please observe that there is no change in lithology, there is no erosional surface, but it is clear uh, unconformity here. Then, of course, the base of the Dushantu formation, it was usually said, well, we have continuous succession from the diamictites to Dushantu. This is not the case. There is paraconformity separating the Nantu or um, diamictite and the basal cup carbonate. But looking at the record of fossils, fossil recovery is restricted to the chert nodules and therefore to only those intervals where those cherts occur. So you see that we have relatively thick portions of the formation which we don't know the record because they are no cherts or they appear to be barren when it was the samples were um, dissolved. Then coming to another example of um, successions. This is totally new, newly studied, new pink section, 
first record of microfossils, and again, we have paraconformity at the base of the Dushan II, and very interesting situation here. Those numbers, one, two, three, refer to the lithostratigraphic members within the Dushan II formation, and you observe the member four is missing here, and this reflects definitely paraconformity and hiatus of unknown uh, time duration. Member four strata are well developed or well preserved in other successions, but this is the lateral difference between certain successions in the Yangtze Gorges area. So if we look now, and of course, I didn't mention, but you see very well that there are as well uh, um, carbon isotope carbs, and very briefly, if we look at the microfossils, you see that they are very complex morphologically, easy to recognize. There are ve several very complex morphologically taxa, which are new and still not recognized very well from the point of view of their um, ranges. And there are those which are cosmopolitan and used for biostratigraphy. Now, coming back to the time frame of the Ediacaran uh, system and the time which is allocated to Dushan II formation. This uh, generalized profile is drawn to the, uh, is, is preserved, uh, shows the proportions of the time duration, not the thicknesses of the formations, and we just, uh, uh, members, and we just pointed here the unconformities, unknown hayati, and of course, it gives us proper understanding that microfossils recorded from the portions of those successions are belonging to different intervals of the Ediacaran system. There is another uh, intriguing <coughs> situation. This is South uh, China, Wang Ang um, succession, and recent dating uh, presented by Zhou et al. 2017 we have now constraint of the age of one of those unconformities, and this number 640 is the dating by Liu et al. 2009. So we have the time interval just a few million of years for this unconformity. And the asterisks show the occurrence of some of the taxa which are known from other successions. Now the common um, range of the taxa, and again, we have assemblages which are restricted in time to different portions, but as well taxa which are coming throughout the entire Dushan II formation and perhaps are higher stratigraphically recorded in Australia. So we may recognize, at least tentatively, some regional zones based, on, for example, on the Tian Shushanya um, taxon and some other globally recorded below this uh, uh, stratigraphic level, then another taxon, another zone which is based on the globally distribu distributed species, which occurs below the base of member three, probably around 580 million years old, uh, back in time, and then another taxon, another zone. Now looking at the very major uh, um, uh, scale of the Ediacaran. Those are regional taxa, those are globally distributed, so we have definitely two distinct biozones in China, but they can be as well recognized in Siberia. Then time zone uh, 580, and above this time interval, we have several zones recognized in Australia, and this was done by Kath Gray in 2005. She recognized four zones, however, having now new records and much earlier stratigraphically of certain, sorry, one <laughs> missing here, uh, uh, stratigraphically much lower than before, we have to revise those biozones, keeping in mind that some of those diagnostic species occur already within the assemblages in China. So altogether, this is the recently published by uh, Shuhai Zhao at, uh, and co-authors in 2016, our interpretation or proposal how to subdivide the Ediacaran. We have to make a few just adjustments, and I mark them here with those uh, crosses. 
First of all, the range of Tian Shushanya may be revised because there is new record of some taxa which may be as well a uh, new species and this is what is coming fro, uh, uh, from the collections of um, Pengju. We have to revise this taxon Hocosferidium anosos which was proposed before our studies to show the range of the second biosome but new record shows that this species occurs at the very base so we have to revise it and then when we look at this bar we have now a lot of uh, ornamented taxa very good for the identification and biozonation so we will change a little bit this image so tentatively we propose several biozones through the Ediacaran system and Altogether, we used 106 uh, species. Among them, 32 are globally distributed. So I hope we may use them for the biostratigraphic subdivision. Thank so you. it would be all. Thank you. Thank you.